one of the things that struck me right from the outset was how extraordinary it was that this scare got abroad when there were, it was so insubstantial. I mean, there was really no scientific basis for it whatsoever. I find it very easy to sympathise with patients who were scared, partly because the media built it up, but also because having your child vaccinated is a positive act. It's something that you did to the child. And so somehow that's, that's more scary than, than, than a sin of omission. Very much, and I think that's even more the case these days when people are much less familiar with the diseases against which their children have been protected by immunization. You know, it's a, a generation or two since people had much experience of measles and mumps and rubella on any significant scale. And so when somebody comes along and says, well, you know, this immunization may cause some other problem, then they're more likely to be susceptible to that. Why do you think that sort of thing happens in our society today? I think that there's a climate of anxiety, uh, but particularly focused on issues of health. Uh, generally, people feel, I think, more isolated, more atomized, more individuated, perhaps, than they did before. And these anxieties and concerns often focus on their health. This is a paradox of early 21st century life. We now have the luxury of irrational anxiety about our health, and can dabble in faddish, unscientific remedies, precisely because scientific medicine allows us to live longer and more healthily. Our fears are fed by newspapers, which wildly exaggerate the risks of scientific medicine and meanwhile churn out acres of positive coverage of alternative therapies. In any other field, politics say, or the next move on interest rates, journalists would ask hard questions and demand answers. But alternative medicine has managed to lodge itself in the less rigorous lifestyle and celebrity pages, essentially free advertising. It's little wonder that alternative health fairs like this are flourishing across the country. What, what's your line? What do you say? Uh, magnetic therapy. What is psychic energy? What are these wands used for? People may come here with real health problems, but what do they get? remedies that appear to have no basis in science or evidence. People putting these in a cat's bed, they'll find the animals will go to the bed with the magnets in it. Has that, that been done properly with controlled trials, is it? No, not been controlled trials. They've got the ancient wisdom that we don't. Right. <laughs> I've always liked the saying that we should be open-minded, but not so open-minded that our brain falls out. So do we all have an angel hovering on our shoulder or something? Is that we what have several. Right. Yes. 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 OK, can, uh, how many have I got? Can, can you tell? Or, or do... Have you asked any angels to come close to you? No. No, well, you haven't got any then. Oh, OK. The idea is yeah. that we all have some form of angelic guidance, angelic guidance, some form of guidance that help us travel our life path. You might need strength, you might need forgiveness, you might need hope all the way through your lifetime. And the angels, as we perceive them, are those energy bands. They're parts of ourselves, they're fragments of ourselves that we can call upon and amplify to help us walk our path. These energies are a little bit like tea. You can have herb teas, you can have decaf teas, you can have all sorts of different flavours and strengths and varieties of teas. But they're all Remember, this is a multi-billion pound industry. Yet, 80% of alternative remedies have never subjected themselves to controlled scientific trials. They depend entirely on subjective word of mouth. Oh, that feels nice. Hunches and private feeling, which may be prone to bias or possibly even delusion. The scientific method, by contrast, tests with objective experiment and statistical analysis what is effective and what is not. Individual scientists may or may not be honest, but science, with its safeguards of peer review and repeating experiment, has scrupulous honesty built into it by design. Science replaces private prejudice 
with publicly verifiable evidence. Untested and unverified yet desperately seeking credibility, alternative remedies follow in the rich tradition of organized religion and set up intricate belief systems. They substitute real science with pseudoscience. Face up or face down? You face up right. and you sit here and now just guide your head so you don't go. This matters because in the process they deny fact and misuse science. But that, isn't that pointing up? I, I just have to go there to check. In flaunting words like energy, vibration, vortex, they exploit and also distort some of science's great discoveries. The sleep, I'm sure, is therapeutic. But how could these illuminated crystals be energizing my chakras, as advertised? Manjia Samantha Lawton is a conventionally trained former GP who now speculates on the science behind alternative fads. She asserts that chakras in our bodies are something like black holes. Yes, as in the big ones that suck in everything in space. We used to think of black holes as the great guzzlers of the universe, that they actually um, started uh, to suck in everything around it. Uh, what we're finding now is that black holes are in the centre of every single galaxy and they occur in all sizes. So black holes have become into a creative principle. A, a creative principle? A creative principle. What does that mean? That we're realising that black holes have something to do with creating matter in the galaxy. And this is very, very new. And uh, what I'm suggesting is that black holes are creative at every level, even within our own bodies, which is what perhaps the chakras are. So whereabouts in, in my body might there be a black hole? Well, the idea from esoteric knowledge is that chakras are centres in the body that are um, spinning, which is why they're called wheels, chakras. And uh, they are different colours and they relate to different parts of the body. So there are traditionally seven chakras at different parts of the body. The universe is a deeply mysterious place and a deeply wonderful place and scientists have always been struggling to understand it. Don't you feel that there's enough real mystery to investigate without importing what sounds to me horribly like mumbo-jumbo? Yes, I can understand that you think it's mumbo-jumbo, but there's plenty of people who are now getting interested in these topics. They are part of our universe. Okay, well, and they're certainly part of the they universe, are part of the universe whether what they do has any value, I mean... Um, That's up to you. <laughs> well, it's not really up to me, it's up to science and it's, it's up, up to, to evidence. It's up to science. What worries me is the beguiling misuse of scientific language to prop up entirely unscientific belief systems. In the Middle Ages, healers would conjure up evil spirits or magical spells. Now, in the 21st century, it seems they turn to black holes and, above all, quantum physics. Quantum theory accounts for the anomalous behaviour of light and atoms. It's astonishingly accurate, but notoriously difficult to grasp. But Deepak Chopra, who once qualified as a doctor, has seized upon quantum jargon and applied it to healing. He claims disease can be caused and cured by a shift in consciousness. If you believe in a rock, you're automatically believing in God. Chopra has managed to become a one-man alternative health industry. He's worth up to $75,000 per lecture, and in this era of self-absorption, he claims Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Hillary Clinton as followers. <laughs> 